All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are so glad to see you today. We are talking about Halloween and how important it is for us to be missional people during Halloween because it is such a crazy time of year where people come to your door. So, Corey, before we start, what's your family dressing up as anything for Halloween? Yeah. What are you? Well, Chrissy just bought Maggie a, a pumpkin costume yesterday nice. and put little her in pumpkins. it. It's the cutest thing I've That's ever seen. Cute, yeah. That's a little hat, and she's just a little, little chunky baby girl in a, yeah. in a pumpkin costume. What are you guys going to be? I don't like to dress up. I, I like either. to. I my like to be the facilitator for my children's yeah, joy. My wife makes me so. CJ got this. Uh, one of Chrissy's friends got him. Um, like he puts pants on, but then it looks like he's riding a dinosaur. Oh, nice! So he's like a Those dinosaur cool. jockey, but so he's the, the dinosaur the legs, legs on the side are uh -huh. in there, flopping around, and he's just yeah. he's wearing suspenders, so it's cute. That's fun. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna do SpongeBob SquarePants. Are you SpongeBob? No, Clive is gonna be SpongeBob. <laughs> Ellie is going to be Man Ray. I don't know who that is. I've only watched like three okay, episodes. Sorry. Well, for those of you who do, I'm going to be Barnacle Boy, and Terry's going to be the other guy. <laughs> He's <laughs> Mermaid Man. That's who it is. Okay. You can tell I'm jazzed about it. Yeah. I really am. You've put a lot of time. So and excited effort. to do this. Terry plans out our our costumes like six months in advance. Yeah. Or just on November 1st from the year before. Right, exactly. Yeah. So When they're all on sale, yeah. one of those people. So it's it's that, that way in our house. I just like Halloween because there's a lot of candy. There's so much candy. And that's really bad for us. Yeah. But, but then like two days into November, you're like, I hate candy. Yeah, exactly. I feel so tired. Exactly, exactly. So Halloween is, you know, it's a divisive issue in, yeah. some, in some ways. But, you know, growing up, I celebrated Halloween. And by celebrate, we don't mean we're making much of Halloween itself. But yeah partaking in the opportunity uh but for you as a kid like was there, there any memories that you had where halloween like a really big halloween memory yes tell me so my grandmother used to make and sew clothes for people mm -hmm. including like on christmas we would get like new pajamas and like a hat with the ball on it <laughs> she would make those but one year Is she betty? made yeah Grand betty so she made me a um like a squirrel costume. Uh -huh. So in Florida, like it's been cold on Halloween like twice in my whole life. Yes. So one year, I think I'm in fifth grade. Um, she, you know, pulls out, look what I made you. And it's made of corduroy. Okay. The squirrel. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. But then like five minutes into this Halloween, it might be like 96 yes. degrees at 6 p.m. Yes. I'm dying i can still remember how sweaty i was yeah. and how hot i was and i didn't know what to do and i was just cranky yep and we were walking around my aunt's neighborhood which was big there's a lot of there's a lot of candy to be mm -hmm. had so you couldn't give up but the squirrel costume absolutely <laughs> corduroy squirrel costume it i can't even yeah. i can't even let you know it was like wearing a trash bag that was itchy yeah dressed up as missy elliott yeah maybe yeah. so i we we have I mean, we both grew up in Orlando. So very similar stories where you're just sweating buckets. You're, yeah. You come back like so dehydrated. You don't even want your candy. You just want water. But I remember <laughs> Do you one still year, barrel through? Right. You all that so when we were kids in our neighborhood, this was the wildest thing. There was like 6,000, felt like 6,000 as a six-year-old kids. Like It was like shoulder to shoulder walking the neighborhood with every area filled up with kids. It was the wildest experience. And I remember... All the neighborhoods are good, but there's this one street where all the older kids lived, mm -hmm. and you knew you didn't walk on it because they were going to steal your candy bag. Really? Yeah. Rude, right? So never, never I remember all the streets being being that way, except for this one. And then um, I remember being kids walking in, in Luke Domic's neighborhood, one of our friends, and there was this family there. And this family gave, not normal candy, king-size candy oh. bars. And so every year, no matter what, we would walk around, we'd do our thing, we'd avoid that one street, and we would make our way over to their house every single year, no matter what. Even when I got older, I would just stop by and be like, hey, you guys got any candy? And it was always, these, you know, the, the Reese four packs, okay? Oh, my goodness. Not talking the two packs or even the singles, a Reese's four pack. That, to me... Man, in my house, we're just giving away the little, yeah. the little shooter. Like, it's not even... King size? King size, bro. So They're every, actual Christians, I yes, think. Yeah. Every kid in the neighborhood yeah. wants to go there, and they were really nice people. So uh, They um, have to be. Right. Very generous. So the question we want to start off with is, should Christians celebrate Halloween? Because when you're talking about that, it really depends what you mean by celebrate. We're Like I said, we're not talking about 
worshiping the devil. We're not talking about, yeah. you know, we're not talking about delving into to dark things, but there is a very good aspect to Halloween. So, Corey, what would you say is like the best thing about Halloween as a believer? For me, especially now, and I think for a lot of people, is it is the easiest way to meet your neighbors. Yeah. Like, people knock on your door, and it's the one day of the year where you're not like, shocked that someone knocked on yeah. your door, like someone that wasn't supposed to come over. Like yeah. we live in such a, I mean, people try to sell us things and solar panels like every other day in our neighborhood. Yeah. So we're not exactly like Jones and open the door, but right. people come to your door, but then also you're allowed to go meet them. Right. Um, in our neighborhood now we get to walk around. We've met families that have children similar ages to my children. So I, it's an easy way to hang out with them yeah. and to be intentional to grow in that relational aspect and community in your community where God has placed you. So I think that's, it's, it's just an easy way. I'm more introverted. So it, it takes away so many obstacles to me meeting people and, and people are expecting to meet you. So it's just an easy way to, to do that. Yeah. I think it's, it's insane to me that we have this opportunity where any other time you're like trying to get to know people as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. I'm introverted too. And so like, there's a lot of times where I get out of my car and I go straight into my house and I don't, you know, spend time outside. Eyes straight down. Right. <laughs> right. Eyes down, hat down. But this is a time where it's actually, like, accepted that mm-hmm. people are going to come to your house. You're going to have a quick conversation. So it, it, there are times where you can have longer conversations on something like Halloween. Yeah. But it's also just a good touch point of creating relationships yeah. so that next time you see them when you're on a walk, you can actually have a, a legit conversation. Yeah. And Terry and I have done that. Terry is a is the... the um, golden retriever. She can make friends with anybody. Social butterfly. Yeah, social butterfly, but I'm not. And so those interactions for me are really important because mm-hmm. it, it opens a door for the next time. Yeah. And if you're I intentional about it and, you know, I'm bad with names. So a lot of times like going into Halloween is one of those days where like, I need to have my notes app out and just like write down. I met, sure. I met Keith. Right. And so I can remember his name. Hopefully I do. The next I, yeah, I, I do that, and then I forget who. Well, like, I forget I where the note yeah, is right. too. I'm like, where did I put that? Right. So, but in the in the Christian life, with things like this, specifically with Halloween, or there's other you know other things, you're talking about Christian liberty, and mm-hmm. Christian liberty is difficult because there are fine lines of of what all believers should be allowed to do, mm-hmm. and then what all believers need to be careful of because you don't know how somebody else feels about things, yeah. and so kind of the the framework that. I operate with when with Christian liberty are there are always things that are outright rejectable mm-hmm. that that are clearly like the Lord has told us not to do this. There are things that are redeemable, and then there's things that are rejoiceable. Things that are just clearly this is glorifying to God. We should be a part of it. Yeah. And so I put Halloween in that redeemable category. Like yes, some people take it way too far and way too dark, and that's not good. But the cool thing about the gospel is the gospel has never been afraid of the darkness. Mm-hmm. Where, the, where the gospel goes, the darkness cannot be. Yeah. And so for us to shy back, and I totally understand, some people have a conscience issue with it, and if that's the case, if you feel like a burden on your conscience, don't. Yeah. But I want to be a person who meets people at the gates of hell with the light of the gospel and doesn't expect those people to kind of come towards me. I mean, you think of yeah. Jesus stepping down out of heaven. He didn't, he didn't expect us to be able to reach ourselves up. He left everything that was perfect and good and came down to this earth. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how we should be as people as well. Yeah. And I, and it is true that there are a lot of people in a lot of different denominations and cultures who grew up right. and like Halloween was a no. Mm-hmm. And a, like, if you think of the holiness Pentecostal movement and I know people um, who are not like, they would be like, Hey, we, my family won't let me celebrate this. Right. And like, I didn't hear about that till I was like in my twenties. And I was like, what do you mean? Yeah. And I think you're right. There's parts, there's parts of Halloween that yes, there's parts of any, right. any holiday that people, um, you know, make it blatantly evil. Like if we think about, there are people on Halloween who just go downtown and club and yeah. wear nothing. Yeah like, and put cat ears on, and Mm -hmm. that's their celebration, like, but that's not even what we're talking about, of, like, we're fathers who have children who are walking the streets of our neighborhood, and (laughs) dressing up and having fun, like, um, you know, if a kid gets invited to a costume party, you're not gonna be like, well, we're not dressing up, like, it's, it's kind of how you view it, yes, like, I mean, there's people who celebrate the 4th of July 
who say the Pledge of Allegiance and read the Declaration of Independence, and there's people who just, you know, get drunk. Mm -hmm. Like, so it, it's kind of how you view that. And yes, like we are called to be not, we're called to be in the world, but not of the world, right. but, but we're called to be salt and light in that world. Exactly. And it's an opportunity to do that. But I still get when people are like, if it's on your conscience, and I know we're going to talk about First Corinthians where Paul talks about that yeah. and talks about, hey, if if you can't or if you're causing your brother to stumble, like that's that you got to draw the line there. Right. Um, but for most of the part, you're right. I think it is a redeemable thing if we go into it knowing the gospel can be shared and, you know, we're we're being obedient to the Lord. Right. And you're not we're not acting sinful or doing anything. Right. So because, again, like the other more, than gluttony of candy. Sure. <laughs> yes. But, like, the, you put yourself in the mindset of the people who are in Paul's day. Like, you have these temples that are that sacrifice meat to idols all mm -hmm. day, every day. That's, like, part of the culture around him. And Christians were being invited over to people's houses and, and offered these this meat that was offered to idols. And so they're asking Paul, like, what do we do? Are we allowed yeah. to eat this? And he says, look, like, we know. He, he says it. Food will not condemn us to God. We know we're no worse off if we do eat, no better off if we do. So this is not one of those situations, specifically with the Christian liberty, where Christians who do partake in in um, using Halloween as a missional opportunity should not look down on other Christians who don't. Yeah. But also Christians who don't should not look at Christians who do look at it as yeah. a missional opportunity and say like, "Wow, those those heathens, what are they doing?" Um, and so it, Paul talks about this, like this is just a matter of conscience, but we but we need to understand both sides of mm -hmm. of that. The reason it's cool, man. The heart of a person who doesn't want to celebrate is because they want holiness, man. That should yeah. be celebrated. That's amazing. However, I want my holiness to move out into the the surrounding neighborhood. I want I want to meet my neighbors yeah. this way. And so we're definitely looking at this, going, hey, this is a redeemable opportunity. This is a way for you to get to know your neighbors, um, and and like. The only time in the year where neighbors come to your house, knock on your door, yes. and get to know you. So this is a huge chance for you to get to know them and to share the gospel. And so yeah, I kind of wanted to um, talk about this. Like, how do you say you're on Halloween night? Mm -hmm. Somebody comes to your door. How do you engage them? Like, what's what do you do if you have a little bit more time? Because in our neighborhood right now, there's not very many kids. Yeah. So okay. when a family with kids comes, we got five minutes to chat real quick. Yeah. What do you do when you meet someone? Um, well, if we're home getting candy, which usually means we put our kids to bed already right. and people are coming over, right. um, just an easy way is to ask the kid what they're dressed up as. And then like, if there's a parent, I just introduce myself. Um, and that's an easy way to do it. If you're going to make people feel comfortable, like you can step outside your door. Exactly. I think that's something. Or sit outside. That's kind of fun yes, sometimes. That's too. an easy one. If people like even... You know, we were talking to our neighbors last night. We were just out there talking to them, and they were like, hey, we have these, like, you know, cocktail tables. Mm -hmm. Like, we have four of them. They're like, we should have those out for Halloween, and then we can just stand out right. and put candy up there and meet right. people because that's just telling people, I want you to know I'm friendly, and I want you to come talk to me. Right. And so that kind of knocks down barriers more than there already are. Just, any like, have a couple questions, but, like, genuinely uh, just be excited and go into the night knowing you could – you know, make a friend or right. you could, you know, this relationship can turn into something that, I mean, you could share a meal at the dinner table later that year because you met them, exactly, which is an opportunity for them to see something different about how you live your life yeah, and how you parent and how, you know, you are a, a spouse that something's different about you. And then you get to share the gospel with them. It's yeah. I think about if the Lord is able to save Paul or Saul of Tarsus on the way to persecute Christians, he can save a family yeah, who's absolutely. on the way to celebrate yeah. getting their kids some candy. You know, so th these are just such huge opportunities. I, d I think of another another thing that's a really good, effective way to engage your neighbors is to tell your story. Mm -hmm. Like, whenever we come to a conversation and, and we're trying to, like, punch someone in the head with the Bible, yeah. it doesn't work out well. But when you go into it saying, like, I'm, I was in a really bad place, and the Lord saved me, yeah. and he... he renewed my life and redeemed my life in this way and here's where life is at now mm -hmm. that's attractive to people yeah and 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 a night like this where you're just kind of hanging out and you're you got you know for us we got young kids and so any conversations it's it's going to be a little bit distracting but like when you tell stories story draws people in yeah. so this is a great way to engage anybody and then 
ask them, hey, tell it, tell me about your story. Like, yes. tell me what you're about. What do you, yeah. what's, you know, what do you, maybe not, don't start with what do you believe, get there though. Yeah. You know, and that's, time. that's not even a, like a Christian philosophy, but you know, people's favorite thing to hear is their name. Yeah. And we're far more interested in ourselves than we are in other people. Mm-hmm. So if you are, you know, the kind of person who is actually interested in the person you're meeting across, like that in itself is attractive. Yeah. And that's already starting out knowing like, oh, this person actually cares about me right. instead of like, they're just going through a list of questions to check it off the box. Yeah. But And, and as an introvert, it's wonderful to ask questions. Because yeah. typically if you ask somebody a question about themselves, they talk for a while. Yeah, then you ask. And while they're talking, listen to them, take, you know, take this all yeah. to heart. But also you can think of another question to ask them in that time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, for sure. So and ask questions. But even as I, I want to read this, like um, your story, as you said, if we're being equipped to share the gospel with people we don't know, First um, Peter three fifteen says, "But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you." And do it with gentleness and respect. So he's talking a little bit about if, you know, if people are like, why do you believe in Jesus? But Mm -hmm. even just to like be prepared for like, well, why do you believe in Jesus? Like what, John, what's different about you? Like, you know, people might not ask that, but really your story is the answer to that. Right. And a lot of people, I remember growing up and thinking my testimony was boring because I grew up in church. But then maybe like I realize I'm only like, the second generation of Christian in my family. Right. So it's not boring anymore to realize like God saved grandma Betty in her forties. Right. And then through that, like my parents and then my aunts and uncles like became believers and started going to church. And so I'm not boring anymore. Right. Like look at God's faithfulness faithfulness in this generations. And yes. And then you can share your story about, you know, God's calling me to this. Yeah. This way of living in this, it's, it's beautiful in, in the gospel and just share your story right. with people. Yeah. And so sharing story is huge. Another one, give out king size candy bars. That'll do it. If you want people to come to your house every year and you want to build a relationship, get some king size yeah. candy bars. That's a great way to, to kind sure. of say like, Hey, I value you. Thanks for coming. Now, if you have 10,000 kids in your neighborhood, don't do that. But in my neighborhood, if I did that, I'd give out 10 of them in a night. No big yeah. deal. That's awesome. That's Good. $10. 10 bucks, man. I don't know how much a king-size candy bar costs, but... Right. And so I, I just think this is such a huge opportunity. And f- for us to waste it, like, you know, Jesus says that, that the harvest is plentiful, but mm-hmm. the workers are few. Yeah. What's amazing about that is we kind of have this promise in the scriptures that wherever we go, there are going to be some who believe. There, there are people who need to hear yeah. the gospel message. And so for us to be worried about sharing the gospel isn't good. Yeah. Because it, it, it is, Jesus has said, Behold, I'm with you always to the ends of the age. Like, okay, if Jesus is with me and he knows that there are going to be people from every tribe, tongue, and nation that come to know him, what, yeah. am, what am I worried about? Have you ever kind of thought on that? Like, the you know, the... the Harvest is is white. The harvest, yes. you know, tell us about that. Like your thoughts on the harvest yeah, being so plentiful. It, kind of like this week teaching this in young adults, God opened my eyes to it. Like Jesus starts verse thirty seven and says, "The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few." I realize my hesitancy, my fear of sharing the gospel with people is because I don't believe the beginning of that sentence right. where Jesus says, "The harvest is plentiful." Right. He's not saying it might be go work real hard and yeah. see what happens. Right. He's saying people are waiting. Right. People are hurting. People need me yeah. is what Jesus is saying. People need a savior. Right. And they need truth. And the truth, I mean, is offensive, but it's also attractive and it because it's a polarizing free. thing. Right. It's not supposed to be grayed up. Right. But and so when it is offensive, what do you do? Well, pray for that person. But at yeah. some point you dust your, dust your feet off and go, hey, yeah. I did what I was responsible to do. I yeah. pray that the Lord draws them in. Yeah. But for the other people, they're yeah. available. Like, God wants to save people. Right. And people are looking, and they don't know what they're looking for. And we can't hide, you know, hide our light under the bushel. We're supposed right. to be a city on a hill. Right. A city on a hill can be seen by people who don't want it and people who do want it. Yeah. But that, I mean, Jesus saying, even using this verse when we read the Great Commission, mm-hmm. where go into all the world and make disciples. But Jesus is saying, there's a ton of disciples waiting for you. <laughs> right, right. Like there's, a, I'm going to use you to reach people. And it's kind of a, do you trust Jesus that the harvest is white, but the 
but also like he says into his harvest, the father's harvest, right. like he's in charge and right. Jesus will build his church. And we're promised that the Holy spirit will be with us and fill us and give us words to say when we don't know what right. to do. Right. And so it's, and yeah, cool and thing. part of it too, when you don't know what to say to somebody that is, it's humanizing to you. Mm-hmm. People don't like a know it all. Pe- yeah. You know, it's, it's okay to say like, Hey, I don't know the answer to that. I'll find out for you. Or like, if it's a tough situation, somebody asks, why did God do this? I, I don't know. I don't know yeah. the answer to that. But what I do know is God is good. Like, yeah. there are very... S- we, there's so many things in our life where we are in conversation and we're telling people, like, I do this or I do this, and they'll be like, why? And you're like, well, I don't really know. <laughs> and like, but it doesn't it doesn't bother us for those things. Right. But it, it, there's something about, we assume as Christians, and maybe people who, you know, outside looking in assume we know everything about what we believe but it's really you're right it's humanizing it's hey that's i'm still learning i'm yeah. still growing that's why i read my bible every day and right. there's a lot i don't know right but even that is a good thing to be like i would love to find out yeah or you know talk to someone i mean that's why pastors have pastors right like i have people i ask questions right. to right and i'm like if i stopped learning at 34 years old something's wrong yeah or i'm lying right so. Right. Yeah, and I think another kind of a side thing is if somebody does have a conscience issue with mm-hmm. this, the, the cool news, news is there's something that people can be a part of for all people, and that's why for us as a church we do fall festivals because like, mm-hmm. we want to have an avenue for people who, who enjoy uh, celebrating Halloween yeah. in a missional way and people who are you know have a conscience issue with it. And so it's just a great way to say, hey, we're still going to invite the neighborhood. This mm-hmm. is still going to be a missional opportunity for you. Um, and so we have a, a fall festival coming up. It's it's going to be a blast. Do you want to give some of the details for it so anybody who sees this video can? Yeah. October 16th from 5 to 7 on our campus. It's going to be a yeah. blast. Uh, the kids have so much fun. Yeah. They there's, just walk around. To, like people decorate their trunks and you just walk around and get candy and people have games and there's bounce houses. and It's, it's so fun. It's really in popcorn. The senior adults make popcorn yeah. and it's really good popcorn. Yeah. It is good popcorn. Yes. So I think that's just an opportunity for people. If you do have a conscience issue, come to our fall festival. That's yes. going to be great. If you don't come to our fall festival, it's, it's going to be also <laughs> It's two weeks before Halloween weekend, and so that is an easy opportunity to invite a neighbor to yes. it with a piece of paper. Yeah. Say, like, I don't go door knock with some of our invites that yeah. we have and invite them, and then that's even a gateway to you know meet them and talk to them further down the road. So you have a couple opportunities just in October of the, right. of this year to meet neighbors and to invite them. Yeah. And it's a, it's a touch point too. Cause like, Hey, do this this week, Halloween, go talk to them, tell them thanks, you know, happy Thanksgiving, and then yeah. invite them on Christmas. If this is a family that, you know, the average person needs like seven touches before they're influenced to do something. These are great opportunities to just be a touch point in their life. And, that's and good. the prayer is over time. The Lord would shift their yes. heart towards him. So, and I think that's man, if you pray and ask God for opportunities, he always answers. Yeah. And it always looks different than you expect. Sure. And then when it happens and God stretches us and hats us have a conversation, I always walk away. I'm like, what was I so scared of? Right. Like the Holy Spirit wants, like if <laughs> yeah. God is in this, it's his harvest yeah. and we pray for people, yeah. especially by name, people that you know, like God moves. Right. And what is the worst that could happen? Like if the Lord is for you. Yeah. The worst thing that can happen is that we're apathetic and do nothing. Exactly, exactly. So we wanted to take this opportunity to remind all of us, ourselves included, that Halloween is an yeah. opportunity to be incredibly missional with your yeah. life. We're commanded to go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all that. So yeah. don't waste this opportunity. Don't let this be an opportunity that passes you by. Let it be a touch point for you and your neighborhood to be a light of the gospel. So guys, like this video, subscribe to the channel. For people in our church, hit the notification bell so that you can see when our videos come out. Sometimes, especially with religious content, sometimes YouTube doesn't push it out to people. So hit the notification bell so you'll be notified about that. Guys, we love you. We appreciate you. We'll see you at our fall festival. Happy candy gathering. Happy candy gathering. Ciao. Bye.